Thanks. Thank you for inviting me here and uh, appreciate the chance to tell us tell you about us. Uh, Bexham Biomedical is an early stage pharma development company. We started with a specific mission, which was to bring ketamine to the market for subcutaneous delivery for pain management. Mm -hmm. And in the process of doing that, we ended up hacking a certain bit of pharmacology and we're now becoming a platform company with numerous molecules, small molecules for delivery for subcutaneous subcutaneous uh, delivery solutions. So in order to do that, we actually developed a pump as well uh, that is a wearable patch pump, a kind mm -hmm. of semi-durable process. And the idea would be uh, to replace or at least supplant substantially opioids in the management of chronic pain. So in the small molecule market, it can be very, very important with these types of medications, something like ketamine, antibiotics, movement disorder molecules, um, even actually now we're thinking about psychedelics as well, and pathogens like MDMA, that the half-life of the drug, how long it lasts in the bloodstream, and how fast it comes on can be very, very important for creating a medical product. If you don't have control over what we call pharmacokinetics, then you're looking at sometimes a very difficult molecule to, to actuate in medical care. Mm -hmm. So let me give you an example. If you have a very, very short-acting drug, okay, and you take it orally over and over again, you're gonna get a seesaw of drug levels in the bloodstream. You might want it to come up and be very, very steady, but if you take it orally, you can't get that done. And that's why there are drugs that are basically only delivered IV, okay? Many of those molecules could graduate to the home setting if you could control delivery. And a great example, again, would be ketamine, which has a very short half-life, about 45 minutes. So if you want to gain control over pain, like let's say after a total knee replacement, you would want to get a steady state. You don't want ups and downs and ups and downs like that. You want to get a blood level that's low, that can give pain control, and give people the relief that they need without having to turn to opioids over and over again. It actually uh, disrupts kind of stereotyped behavior and ways of interacting like in the body, in the brain, kind of even at the spiritual level. And so our company plans to move our, our, our main technology, which is all basically modular. The, the pump we're developing is modular. It's designed to accept other molecules. The ketamine formulation is agnostic to indication. And once we get through phase one and we show that uh, A, our formulation is safe and that our pump, pump approach is working, mm -hmm. we can expand into mental health indications and we can expand into other indications that we're still in a bit of stealth mode, but there are uh, even other indications that are outside of mental health uh, that we can apply ketamine to that we're looking forward to. Well, this is a big one for me. Uh, we started early on looking at this. I've, I've been uh, very interested in psychedelics for about 30 years. I think that they're very important for humankind to have access to uh, in many different ways. And I, I'm agnostic to uh, uh, you know, indigenous modes and decriminalization. But if we're going to bring these treatments into the medical office, what we have to do is control the delivery such that we know we can get people into the space, we can get them up to altitude, and we can turn off the process and get them out within a time frame that works for the medical setting. And I, I've been delivering ketamine in clinical care for about 20 years um, in mental health care, which is, which is basically getting people into a high psychedelic state and getting them back down to ground and getting them out the door safely to their loved ones at home. And I can tell you that if you don't know when people are coming down the ground, you don't have a product mm -hmm. in the medical market. And so uh, that's what we've been trying to solve. And we believe, I'll give you a quick example. DMT is the active ingredient in ayahuasca. Currently, mostly that mo molecule is delivered with an MAO inhibitor taken orally. Okay, what that does is it allows you to get DMT into your bloodstream. Okay, but what it also means is that you've deactivated your detox apparatus in your body. So it takes a long time to come back down to ground, mm -hmm. okay? If you don't do that, if you had a pump that you could put on, deliver that DMT to the bloodstream, get people into the space, when you turn it off, you're gonna come back to ground in about 10 to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So our product basically could create a one, two or three hour ayahuasca-like experience without necessarily needing an MAO inhibitor. Vastly safer and fits within the medical model.
This is a very common question and people, depending on where they study or where, you know, whatever their research is, they'll kind of hit the issue at that level. I mean, you can look at ketamine research and you can look at fMRI, you can look at dendritic densities, you can look at what's happening in cascades and the molecules and you can say, oh, that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. Or you can look at the spiritual side and you can see the symbolism that's occurring where people kind of recapture an aspect of themselves, understand something about themselves that they've forgotten and it's kind of like rediscovery of who they are and they will tell you that this mattered to them enormously in the weeks afterward in, in kind of recapturing um, a sense of who they are um, and then there's this kind of like love based kind of orientation towards themselves and towards their community and towards their their people in their lives that you just hear over and over again i don't know how to separate those things so i i think that this is why these molecules and these medicines are so important for us is that I think they really, truly, it's, a, it's an overused word, but I think they truly integrate body, mind, and spirit. Even at the level of body, they're anti-inflammatory, which we find, which, which may come from the gratitude that people express. We know that gratitude and love actually is anti-inflammatory. So what it, which way is it going? I don't know, but I know that uh, their time is now, and so hopefully we'll help bring, bring these. I'm, I'm, I think there are a lot of ways to get uh, this done for different people, but we're, we're going the medical route.